Hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Steel and Flesh 2, a game that is 100% totally not ripping off the Mountain Blade series. <clears throat> Today in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to become a pro gamer in the world of Mountain Blade Steel and Flesh 2. Yes, I'm gonna be teaching you how to become the war criminal you always aspired to be. Oh yes. So ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, take some notes, and let's get on with the video. As always in my guide videos, we are first going to make ourselves a new character. So let's do that. For the difficulty select, I highly recommend that you start in baby mode. Main reasoning is that the higher the difficulty, the more annoying the game gets. Oh, you think that higher difficulty equals more challenging? No, ladies and gentlemen, in this game, higher difficulties, instead of giving you more challenge, the game gives you more chores. The gameplay becomes very annoying, and we don't want that. Trust me, you don't want that too. And plus, we're here to have fun, so there's absolutely no shame in playing baby mode. With our difficulty selected, it's time to name our character, oh yeah! Of course, we will be naming him to something very appropriate. And he will be none other than the legendary UG Bulge! Oh my lord, ladies and gentlemen, it's the one and only Mr. Bulge! <laughs> His name is absolutely perfect, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yes! And Mr. Bulge will be leading the state of Bastana to fame and glory! <laughs> yes! For our spawn point, it doesn't really matter. You can just choose whatever spawn you want. For me, I'm going to choose the Sultanate of Rum. Why the Sultanate of Rum? It's because I'm base and I don't care. Now for our character's background. Again, it doesn't matter what background you choose. The only significance of choosing a background is how you start the game. For example, if you choose the lumberjack background, you will start the game with an axe as a weapon and a bunch of wood logs in your inventory. Obviously, the poor man background is the worst of all backgrounds. Only take it if you feel like an absolute chad. If you want the best character background to start the game with, then choose the Ruined Merchant as your background. Why you ask? We'll talk about that later. With that said, we will be choosing the Ruined Merchant as a background for Mr. Bulge. Now for the stat distribution. The game offers a lot of available skills, but only a handful of these skills are actually useful for us. Here is a list of the most useful skills in the game. These skills will help us hugely when it comes to capturing towns and castles later on in the game. So as much as possible, we must prioritize on maximizing these specific skills in order, and anything else that's not in this list should be ignored. With our stat points distributed, we are now ready to dive into the world of Mountain Blade Steel and Flesh 2. Let's begin! Alright, we're in! But before anything else, let's open our inventory. And oh look at that ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Bulge and oh my lord he's beautiful. Very beautiful indeed. Just look at him, he's perfect, practically flawless in each and every way. Oh ho 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 ho. What an amazing specimen of a man he is. Just look at that perfectly chiseled jaw and that facial hair. Oh yes ladies and gentlemen, this right here is undeniably the perfect face. Oh, you guys think that this face is perfect? No, this is what you call a supreme genetic failure. Just look at Mr. Bulge, that right there is the face of a perfect man. If we open our inventory and go to baggage animals, You'll see that we have ourselves a camel. Whenever you start a game with the ruined merchant as your background, you always start with a baggage animal. What do they do? Well, they increase our inventory space. That's it. Pretty useless at this point in the game. The reason why I chose ruined merchant is that we can sell this camel. As you can see, it's valued quite a lot. So if we sell it, we'll be able to start the game with a higher capital. So let's do that. We can just go to a random castle and just straight up sell it on the market. And there we go! 
we just gained 16,000 gold from that one camel. And now, we will start the game with 41,000 gold in the bank. With that amount of money, we can pretty much do whatever we want. But for us, we are gonna be starting a business. Businesses are very important in this game. They are going to be your main source of income the more the game progresses. You can't simply rely on capturing bases and selling loot to sustain yourself and your army. So starting a business early on in the game will ensure yourself a constant and passive flow of income each in-game week. Alright Konya, this city seems to be the perfect place to start our first business. So let's start gathering resources. You have three main businesses in the game. You can start a chicken coop, a pigsty, or a barn, all of which require resources to build. The barn yields the most profit out of all three, so naturally, we will be aiming to build a barn. After the barn is built, you will again be required to buy and gather furniture, equipment, and the livestock themselves for your business to properly function, as well as hire the required workers for your business to become fully automated. Once everything's in place, press the run button and there you go, you have successfully started a business. I think we have everything necessary, so let's go back to Konya, go to town, and create production. We are gonna be starting a barn, there we go, put down the necessary things, put the cows in their pens, and hire the necessary workers. Then run. There we go ladies and gentlemen, we have a barn. Do note that businesses require gold to maintain. Your supplier here will constantly take gold from your bank to supply the food necessary for the animals. So as much as possible, don't let your gold run low, else your animals won't have food and your business won't be able to produce. With our first barn set up, we are now insured for the rest of the game. As long as we don't run out of money that is. Our business will run indefinitely as long as there is gold in the bank. So at this point, the game becomes an idle game. Since you have a barn set up, you can just do nothing and wait for a whole in-game week. Then boom, instant profit. That is, if you wanna play it that way of course. But for me, I'm gonna try to grow my money even further. And what better way to gain money than participating in the arena? Participating in arena fights is the best way to gain money in the early game. Arena fights can reward you with at most 20,000 gold, with a 14,000 gold profit. So if you want big, quick, and easy money, then arena is the way to go. Note that there are two main modes for arena. You have the standard sword fighting, and you have jousting. For a new player, I highly recommend to join sword fighting. And I highly advise to stay the hell away from jousting. Never touch jousting. Trust me, it's for the sake of your own sanity. But chicken, how will I know if the arena is doing sword fighting or jousting? That's simple ladies and gentlemen. You see this screen on the left? If you see people walking around and wielding swords, then that means it's sword fighting. If you see people riding on horseback, then that means turn around and run away. Alright, I've joined in an arena. This should be fairly an easy win for us, especially since the game's AI is piss poor. Alright, we've made it into the final round. This fight is gonna be epic. Yeah, no. And there we go ladies and gentlemen, easy money. Alright, it's been a long while now. As you can see here, I have managed to master up over 500 troops. Also, I have grown my businesses even further. We now have 5 active barns. This right here is a lot of money. But most importantly, we are now ready to declare war. 
Oh yes ladies and gentlemen, it's time to commit countless war crimes. So this begs the question, who should we declare war with? Well, that completely depends on you. If you want to play it safe, then I suggest declaring war to the weakest state. But if you wanna play it the Giga Chad way, then just basically declare war on whatever state you want to go war with. And that is exactly what we're gonna do. So right now, the ideal target would be Konya, since all of our businesses are in that city. Also, as you may have noticed, Konya no longer belongs to the Sultanate of Ram. That's because while I was away off camera, the Byzantine Empire went in and captured it. But that shouldn't matter. Alright, so it's time to declare war. Obviously, we can't win this war directly. So we're gonna have to do some very cheesy strategies to win it. So what I'm gonna do here is something called baiting. Basically, fake sieging. When you put a city under siege, it will broadcast a message saying that you are attacking the city. This will notify your enemy and they will immediately send reinforcements to help defend the city. But here's the thing, we're not actually going to attack the city. We are only going to attract the reinforcements so they would come to us. Oh look, here's one already. We are gonna be intercepting them and fighting them on the field. There we go, easy win. Oh look, here's another. And dead, another easy win. So what exactly is the goal here? The goal, ladies and gentlemen, is to pick them apart one by one. Remember, these guys were sent to defend Konya. So if we take them out one by one, there will be lesser defenders on the city. If they reach the city, then we will have a harder time capturing it. Not to mention the casualties we will have to suffer. Oh no. Are you serious? Yeah, we have no chance. No chance on taking that head on. Okay. So, uh, I failed in keeping them from entering the city, so we're gonna have to reset. This is gonna take a while. If you think we're not doing so well, then you're wrong. Our bank is actually doing really good with over a hundred thousand gold worth of buffer money. So yeah, we're doing good even without the help of our businesses. Dude, they don't stop coming. Another one appears on the horizon the moment I take one out. Yo, how many of them are there? I've literally destroyed so much of their army. Another one! Let me just take care of you real quick. And you're dead. I don't care about your loot anymore. I just want Konya so this video can end. Ooh, alright. Konya is down to 200 defenders. I think this is it ladies and gentlemen. I think this is the one. This may be the moment we finally take Konya. Oh, they're going to Bitless? They're going to Bitless! Right, Bitless is currently under siege by the Kamakura Shogunate. Oh, what a blessing from the heavens! Well, not really. They declared war on me earlier for whatever reason. But they're helping me capture Konya by being an effective distraction. Oh, he passed Konya! <laughs> Come on, this is it! Just a little more! Okay, okay. Konya is now ours, ladies and gentlemen. Konya is now officially ours. Finally, after a long time of separation, I've been reunited with my businesses. Oh, my barns. Oh, how I've missed my barns. Look at that. Look at that. Owned by the state of Bastanat. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. The state of Bastanat. We may be small and only have a village and a city, but man we are rich. And we have a huge army at our disposal. Now that King Bulge has a proper kingdom to rule, here begins the path to fame and glory of the state of Bastanat. But that is a story for another time. With our first city successfully conquered, this marks the end of this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this and hopefully found this video helpful. As always, thank you for watching and see you guys in the next one.